For our final video for this chapter, we're going to look at the two main groups of minerals, silicates and non-silicates, and figure out what characterizes each group. So when we look at all of the minerals on our planet, there are over 4,000 that we have identified so far. But even though there are literally thousands of them, only a few dozen are common in our Earth's crust. And we're going to talk about this in later chapters, but the Earth is very different on the crust where we live versus the mantle and the core inside of the planet. But these few dozen minerals are known as rock-forming minerals. They're the minerals that end up forming together and creating the common rocks on our surface. But in addition to those few dozen rock-forming minerals, we have a few dozen more economic minerals. These are found in smaller quantities. Usually they're harder to find, but they're economic. We use them to produce products, and they're capable of generating a lot of profits. So we spend a lot of money finding and mining these economic minerals as well. But when we're looking at our rock forming minerals, the ones that are most common in our crust, we see that regardless of where we are on our planet, they're made up of only about eight elements. Oxygen is the most abundant element and it makes up about half of our crust. The second most abundant is silicon, which makes up about a quarter. And then we have smaller amounts of aluminum, iron, magnesium, sodium, calcium, and some others. But for the most part, we see that about 75% of our crust is made out of two elements, oxygen and silicon. And then we also have some metals, our iron and magnesium, as well as some salts like our potassium, sodium, inside of our crust as well. So we see that because silicon and oxygen make up about 75% of our crust, they form our most common minerals on our planet. And we call these the silicate minerals. They're minerals that have both silicon and oxygen inside of them. And on our planet, we have more than 800 silicate minerals that together make up over 90% of our crust. So because silicon and oxygen make up 75%, combined these two elements together form up about 90% of the minerals found in Earth's crust. But that following 10% that aren't silicates the minerals that don't have both silicon and oxygen, we call this a different mineral group that we call the non-silicates. And again, these make up about 10% of Earth's crust. And while they are not common or easy to find, these are our economic minerals, the ones that help us make money and allow our civilization to continue. So we're going to start off talking about our silicate minerals. And again, these have to have two elements, the two most common elements of silicon and oxygen. If it only has one or the other, it's a non-silicate. Silicates have to have both elements. And this is because those two elements form in a very specific shape called a tetrahedron. And this tetrahedron Honestly, it's just a very fancy way of saying a pyramid. And the way the pyramid develops is the silicon is surrounded by four oxygen atoms. And overall, it creates this pyramid shape to it. And again, that pyramid shape, I don't know why, we call it a tetrahedron. But those tetrahedron can start bonding to one another. They can start forming into chains. Think of like a necklace chain. It can also start forming into sheets like pieces of paper or really complex three-dimensional networks that are going to form really hard and really resistant minerals. And we're not going to go super in-depth with all of the different minerals for our lecture. We might see them on the quizzes, but again, remember you can take your quizzes multiple times and they are open notes, open text, meaning that you can take your time and look up each question. But 
For our exams, we're not going to look at super specific minerals. But things I would like you to know is that out of all of the minerals on our planet, feldspars are the most abundant. They make up over half at 51% of Earth's crust. The second most abundant mineral on our planet is also a silicate, and this one is called quartz. Quartz is unique because out of its chemical compound, it's only made out of those two elements, silicon and oxygen. And generally, we see that silicates generally break between each of those tetrahedra. They do not break through them, but rather we simply cleave or break between each of those tetrahedra structures. So we're going to see that these silicate minerals can form in different ways on our planet. The first way that this can happen is when we have lava cooling down from a liquid and turning into a solid igneous rock. As it's turning from a liquid into a solid rock, it's cooling down and minerals are crystallizing. They're forming and growing as that lava turns from a liquid into a solid. And we're going to get a lot more into this next chapter. But the minerals that are produced in this way are determined by what kind of elements are dissolved inside of that lava and what kind of environment it's cooling in. But again, we'll get into this more in the future. Another way that silicate minerals are produced on our planet is when they're weathered or they're broken down from pre-existing rock pieces. We're going to see that this is going to become important when we talk about sedimentary rocks. And then finally, we can also see that some silicate minerals form during mountain building. When we have extreme pressures from continental collisions forming metamorphic rocks, silicate minerals can also develop this way. So we're going to see silicate minerals in all three types of our rocks next chapter. We're going to see it forming from lava with igneous rocks, weathering down for sedimentary rocks, and forming from pressure in metamorphic rocks. When we look at our silicate minerals, we want to figure out whether it is a felsic mineral or a mafic mineral. When they're felsic, these are light minerals. They're going to be light in color, and they're also going to be light in weight. And this is because they're made up of different types of salts. Things like potassium, sodium, and calcium. Because salts are lightweight, it's going to lead these minerals to be light in weight. So with our silicates, they, the most common ones that we see are feldspars and quartz. Again, the two most common minerals on our planet. As well as muscovites and clays. But to repeat myself, because you will see this again, felsic minerals are light in weight, they're light in color, and they're low density because they're made up of those salty elements. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we also have mafic silicate minerals. These are ones that instead of having salty elements like sodium and potassium, they have metallic elements like iron and magnesium. These metallic elements weigh a lot more than salt elements do. So it leads these mafic minerals to be heavier in weight. They're going to have a higher specific gravity, feeling denser. And they're also going to get a dark color from all of that iron and magnesium inside of them. And some common examples of these mafic minerals are pyroxenes, amphiboles, olivine, biotite, and garnet. And so far, we've just talked about silicate minerals, 90% of the minerals in Earth's crust. But for this last slide, we're going to talk about non-silicate minerals. These are every other type of mineral that don't have both silicon and oxygen. But we're going to divide our non-silicate minerals up into subgroups. Things like our carbonates, our halides, our sulfides, based on their chemical formulas. And 
Depending on what group they're in, they're going to have different economic uses. But here in Florida, the ones that we see the most commonly are our carbonates. These end with an ion group of calcium carbonate, CaCO3, and these form in shallow marine environments like Florida. So we commonly see them making up um, our road surfaces, our building, and the cement making up our sidewalks. So even though silicates make up less than 10% of Earth's crust, they're really economically important. Our world revolves around these very kind of rare non-silicate minerals. They're not common, but we spend a lot of time, money, and resources finding and extracting these non-silicate minerals so that life can continue as we know it.